Good evening, Ni Hao, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of The Nameless Pen Show. My name is Timo, and um, I know the light is bad, and it's a bit louder today than usual. I don't care, I want to do this review, I want to ink up the pen I've bought, I want to ink it up desperately, and I want to share that moment with you, actually, the first uh, writing with a new pen, I want to share that with you. Uh, inking it up won't be so spectacular. Um, okay, I've done something some of you might consider stupid, some of you might consider brave. I myself, I think this is uh, typically me. Um, I do something, it turns out fantastic and great, and a while later everybody wants to do it. Okay, um, what did I do? I bought a fountain pen for $115 plus $10 PMP plus tax, which adds up to $150 for one single fountain pen. Okay, now you might might say one hundred and fifty dollars. It's it's not so bad. You can get some really really great pens for one hundred and fifty dollars. Um, you could get, for example, a uh, Twisby Micarta. The Micarta two is really really beautiful. Uh, or you could get a uh, Pelican M two hundred or two Pelican M two hundred or a Twisby five eighty and a Pelican two hundred or even I I think I'm not quite sure, but I think you can get for this kind of money a uh, Vanishing Point from uh, Richard Binder even. Um, those pens are excellent. They have a great reputation. Um, so, for one hundred and fifty, one hundred. What's wrong with me today? For one hundred and fifty dollars, you can get some fantastic pens uh, that you know are excellent, that will bring you joy, and will serve you for a very, very long time. And what? I, what did I get? I got this. You have no idea what it is. It's all black. There's no logo or anything. Could be anything. Maybe something from Italy. Well, maybe not for one hundred and fifty dollars, but um, <clears throat> well, what could I have bought? I mean, you know, I have several Pelican pens, for example. Maybe another one. Hey, there's a white cloth. Fantastic! It looks like like a uh, polishing cloth. Um, never seen that with any other Pelican. Maybe it's not a Pelican. Uh, maybe it's something different altogether. Let's see what's under the cloth. Under the cloth, there's. Um, something that looks like an armchair of an old uh, arm armrest of an old chair. I don't know. It is, oh, yay! Um, but it's meant to be like that weird. Okay, inside the box, inside the cloth, there is another box. It is lacquered. It is highly reflective. You can see me in there now, whatever. And you can see that my wife ordered stuff uh, again on the internet. But well, I order pants, she orders uh, shoes and stuff. And who am I to judge? Um, there is a funky fabric on top of uh, the box and it looks like I said before like an old chair or an old ugly gobelin or something. I don't care. I want to know what's inside. I don't care much about the, the package. So let's open this up and what do we find? We find... Well, I'm gonna make it a little bit more of a secret. There are three pens and maybe you know one of them. This one. I don't think you know the other two pens, but this one you know. This is a hero window pane something never mind <clears throat> the other pen is a uranus that looks a lot smaller than i expected it to be which is unfortunate for me but good for my wife um okay and the pen uh, i'm going to talk about is this and it is a as you can read now i hope maybe it is a duke pen so <laughs> who would buy a Duke pen. If you have $150 and you could get all those great, uh, fantastic, reliable pens, huh? who would get a Duke pen? Oh, that might have been a bit loud. Who would get a Duke pen? Well, of course me. Why? Because I'm a sucker for Chinese pens. And, and I already have uh, four, four Duke pens. Two of them are very good. And uh, two are freaking fantastic. Really, really, really great. So I thought if an ordinary Duke pen costs about um, 15 15 euros, what um, can they do with 100 euros? <laughs> and uh, it seems that they the first thing they do is spend 10 euros on, on the this thing, which is kind of pointless, but whatever. Some people may like to store that on the on the desk, I don't. And uh, <clears throat> they do have a, or this pen does have a, a 14 karat gold nib. And I'm a bit disappointed because the nib says 14k. It does not say uh, 580 instead of 585, what it usually says. And uh, well, okay, this is the pen. This is $150 of Duke pen. 
The blue lines you can see now are not reflections. Those are in the pen, a part of it at least. There's n no blue lines in the cap. I'm going to show that on the other can. That's going to work a lot better. Okay, what do we have? We have a pen that has a weight of, let me check, 40.7 grams. Have heavier pens like the Faber Castell Emotion, for example. Uh, I have lighter pens like uh, the like a Safari, for example. I do have a Safari here for size comparisons. Comparison, because most of you know how big a Lamy Safari is, and actually. The Duke is uh, kept a little bit longer than the Lamy Safari. Okay, <clears throat> most of the pen I'm going to show you on the other camera because this one is not very good with close-ups. Um, what can I say about this pen? Um, it is not polished as much as I thought it would be, but that's okay. Um, the blue lines look like would look like laces if they were straight, but they're oh, it's an interesting design. Mm, the cap. Uh, the cap is a screw on off cap and it takes one and a half turns to get it off or on and uh, the nip looks um, not like a typical duke nip it looks a bit like a german nip um, with white and yellow gold i'm going to show you on the other camera um, altogether i think this pen does does it post it posts it posts securely but, um, well, this being a screw-on cap, I wouldn't post it uh, if I didn't have to. And it's it's definitely long enough. Uh, there's no need to post this pen unless you have really, really, really large hands. Let's make a uncapped size comparison between the Duke and the Safari. And that's a bit weird because uh, the Safari is now longer suddenly. Not by much, but maybe half a centimeter. Uh, which means the cap... The cap... The cap, the cap is long, very long. I think the nip. Let's see. Uh, okay, the nips, the nip goes uh, till there maybe, and there's uh, still two centimeters of cap that are. Well, the cap could be one, one centimeter uh, shorter, and there would still be no difference in functionality. Okay, I think that's it. Duke, been there, been there. Been at the Duke company uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, in Germany because this was no, it, it is it was it was a German brand. It used to be Duke Lux uh, Germany uh, near Feeling Schwenningen, about uh, an hour drive away from here. And I want to go there anyway. And, I mean to to Feeling Schwenningen with my wife. And so I visited uh, the company, the, the the factory, whatever. There's nothing there. Uh, it's nothing. I think everything's happening in China. They have this Duke Lux Germany to to make it a. GmbH uh, uh, limited, uh, trim limited uh, company because it looks good, it sounds good, and uh, that's it. I think everything else happens in China. Okay, nothing else to say. Let's ink it up and do a. Yeah, let's see how it, how it performs. Oh, stop. Converter. Now we can do that when inking. See you in a second. Oh, the bad light is really unfortunate. I've ordered a video light finally, but it's not there yet. Anyway, let me sh try to show you some details of the pen. Um, although you won't be able to see the colors. Okay, this is uh, the clip, the nice and springy clip. Uh, it has the Duke logo here, which I don't fancy much. Uh, the Well, let's try with the... Yeah, you can see the, the nice blue lines on the top of the cap and a highly reflective metal bit there. Um, this is working better than I thought it would. This is the Duke logo, the crown. Uh, this is the part I really like because uh, this Duke logo and uh, the rings and the letters and stuff here, this is um, metal somehow and it uh, is on on the cap or in the cap. I, um, you can feel the metal. I mean, um, well, you know what I mean. This feels very nice. I have no idea how they do that, but it feels really, really good. It looks really good. Uh, the blue stripes are there on the on the barrel again. They have something of a laser, although they are not straight. Yeah, that's that's really nice. I think. I hope I'm not making you dizzy. This is really good looking, but as you can see, um, the barrel is not polished perfectly. 
uh, I think I can do the rest of the polishing with my Dremel, maybe. Um, this is a bit of a letdown. I expected it to be perfectly polished. All right. Um, I already said that it is a cartridge converter pen, and the converter is. Oh, this takes ages to screw up. The converter is, yeah, the standard uh, Duke converter, uh, just the same one as on the cheaper pens. So this pen is 95 euros more expensive than the normal pens, and uh, it has the same converter and the build quality is well. It's okay, but it's not not perfect. I mean. The material is good and the threads are good and, and it feels nice, but it's not, not polished as well as it could be. Okay, most important, of course, is the nib. Um, let's try that with a loop again. This looks like a German nib, if you ask me. You can see this one isn't polished either. Um, let's see if that was just dust. Okay, but it's quite okay white gold and yellow gold. The white gold was rather thin. You can't see it as well as I thought you would. Um, it says 14k. Uh, it doesn't say 580 like um, most other Duke gold nibs, which is a bit disappointing. <laughs> uh, I don't really care. The feed is uh, standardish. It's, yeah, it'll do. But the nib is nice. The nib looks nice. I like it. Okay. So here it is, together with some flies attracted by the light. Uh, the pen, well, it, fe it feels good. It feels really good. Uh, my fingers on the step down here and on the threads, but they are very, very soft. I can hardly feel it. Um, let me get some, some ink. I have too many inks. I can't get them out easily anymore of the drawer there in. All right. Um, this is Waterman Florida Blue because it is very well behaved and has a nice color um, and it has some sheen actually. Believe it or not, it does have some sheen. It takes really ages to screw the barrel apart. Okay, the piston is not 100% smooth. You know, the piston of the converter doesn't really matter. There's only, of course, this happens uh, the first time you ink something up. Um, the converter is not completely full, I don't care, I just want to do a writing sample. So a bit of ink is good enough for me. Well, I wonder should I position the camera differently for the writing sample or just go ahead? Well, I think I'll just go ahead. If it doesn't work, I can reposition later. Okay, let's write something. This is a, what's the name of the model? 3379. Three, this is a wow wow this is completely 100% smooth this is really 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 smooth and uh, this is really really wet maybe a bit too wet for my taste uh, but really really smooth okay um wetness when when we're at it okay this is ridiculous Three, two, one. <laughs> okay, this is seriously wet. <clears throat> um, this was my fault. This is so excessively smooth, it's unbelievable. Uh, I'm, I'm really, really, really surprised. I'm, I'm really happy at the moment, really. Okay, um, uh, let's try some... Nine. Oh my God! I can tell you my this is my fault. My uh, Pelican four hundred nibs, for example, they can't keep up with that. And this is quite some serious line variation. This is and it feels very natural. I need very very little pressure to get this line variation. Very little pressure. This wow! This feels <laughs> fantastic. This is excellent. This makes up for for the pen not being polished and anything. <clears throat> Um, I'm not a fast writer, so let's just do... No way, this pen will never, 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 never skip. Just look at how wet this is. Um, <laughs> fantastic. Hmm. Okay. 
this is extremely pretty this is very very smooth this is uh, flexible I, I mean you know it has this uh, nib is soft it has some some wow can you see that let me try to zoom a, a little bit in um, okay that's I think that as much as possible no, I think you can't see that but the tines open up really really beautifully and they spring back immediately this is a soft nib I'm I'm amazed this is oh god this I don't know what to do <laughs> um, wow Was that my fault? I hope that was my fault. All right, <laughs> I'm not kidding. This is pretty much, this is one of the best nibs I have. It is uh, smoother uh, than my 18 karat um, Sonnet. Uh, it is smoother than the um, Pelican 400s. It is as smooth as uh, the Vanishing Point nibs I have. Uh, the Vanishing Point nibs are really great uh, too. Uh, but this one offers more, of course, a lot more line variation than the Vanishing Point nibs. Um, it is a very, very, very wet nib, but actually you can write with this. I mean, if you write a page, when, when you reach the end of the page, uh, pretty much most of uh, what you've written first will be dry. Uh, so uh, it is okay. Um, fantastic, fantastic, really fantastic. I love this nib. I'm really happy I bought this pen. I'm happy I spent those $150. I don't know any other pen in this price range with a nib as good as this one. Okay. I, obviously haven't tried them all and maybe there are some I uh, yeah I haven't ever held in my hands that are as good but but this is really this is pretty much as good as it gets um, I've written with a uh, Pelican M1000 a couple of weeks ago and I fell in love with this pen um, the M1000 nib and this one feel very similar this is, of course, the M1000 I tried. It was thinner, uh, but really, this is high grade. I'm happy. Okay, I'm going to stop babbling. I'm uh, going to stop this video. Guys, ladies, if you want a good nib, well, this has been the surprise of my fountain pen life, and this is definitely my recommendation. Fantastic pen. Really fantastic pen. Okay, um, well, I'm going to end this video and go on writing for a bit. Bye-bye. <laughs>